guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is abiola and if this is your first time here you're welcome if you are a returning subscriber you're welcome as well in today's tutorial we'll be recreating the jumpsuit we have on the right the one i recreated is the one on the left and without wasting so much time let us go straight into the video of today so the first thing we need to do is to calculate the quantity of fabric we need especially the width of the fabric that we need okay so my hip circumference is 41 inches you need to note your own hip circumference so we're going to divide our hip circumference by four mine being 41 inches i will divide that by four to have 10.25 okay the next step depends on how wide you want your trousers to be i want mine to be moderately wide not so wide but wide so i'm going to multiply what i got that 10.25 by 2.5 inches you as a person you can decide to multiply yours by two you can decide to multiply by three i think the least you should go is two but you can multiply it more than three inches depending on how wide you want this your trouser to be after multiplying my 10.25 by 2.5 i got 25.6 inches that is how wide one part of the front trouser will be just one part of the front we haven't calculated for the back therefore to determine the quantity of fabric needed for the two front parts you would need to times this 25.6 by 2 and that gives 51.2 inches and you would need to add that 51.2 inches to your crotch extension which is very important now how do you calculate your crotch extension you get that by dividing your hip by 16 inches my hip is 41 which is why you have 41 at that point divided by 16 inches so 51 plus 2.56 which is what i got from dividing my hip by 16 inches will give me 53.76 so that is the total width of fabric needed to cut out the front part of our trouser the length of the fabric needed depends on how long you want your trouser to be for me i just want it to be 42 inches now let's go ahead and take a look at the fabric i'm going to measure it so that you can see and understand better what i was explaining what i am supposed to have at this point after measuring should be 53.7 inches but me being the type that i don't want the fact that after cutting out exactly 50 3.7 inches and i fold it i won't get exactly what i want because you know how fabrics can be so i have the 58 inches i added about um five inches more so that when i fold it it's better to have more than less okay now um we all know that anything aside ankara is shelly crepe fabrics or chiffons they come in by 60 so the length of this fabric is 60 i just maintained that 60 i'll cut out the length i want from it you know so um, i didn't bother cutting out the length so what i have here is 60 inches but i'm going to cut out my desired length so now let's go ahead to fold the fabric to fold this fabric you're going to go ahead and fold the width when i say the width that is that 58 inches i measured out initially you know I was supposed to cut out 53.7 but i cut out 58 now look at the way I'm, I'm folding you fold the two ends together after folding the two ends together just go ahead and position it properly on the table arrange it properly okay um so that it looks you know well arranged for you to take your measurement after arranging the first step i'm going to take is to cut out the topmost part which i do not like to include in my outfits if you've watched any of my tutorials before now you would know that so i'll go ahead to trim off that top part now i will go ahead to mark my measurement i'll start by marking my hip point and your hip point is your waist to the widest part of your hip my hip point is 10 inches but guys i'm not going to just mark 10 inches i'm going to mark 10.5 i added 0.5 inch allowance that 0.5 inch i added is what i will use to join the trouser to the top part which is the bodice part okay so i'll go ahead to mark 10 point five so the next step is to mark your crutch measurement how do you mark your crutch measurement you may ask because i've seen that question in a lot of my videos that have to do with trousers 
what you just need to do is to sit on a flat surface ensure it's a flat surface and before you sit tie a rope around your waist or you wear a trouser that you like the feet you like how high it is or you know a jumpsuit that you like the waistline where the waistline stopped what you need to do is once you sit on that hard surface you take your measurement from that your waistline to the hard surface just like you can see on your screen for me my crutch whenever i'm making a jumpsuit i like to use 11 inches but because this is a free jumpsuit i'm going to go ahead to add one inch to that okay so after adding one inch to that i will also add that 0.5 inch allowance for joining to the top and that implies that i am going to mark 12.5 inches which is what i just marked now let's calculate 11 plus 1 inch of ease that is 12 plus 0.5 inch allowance that is 12.5 so i marked 12.5 i'll go ahead to you know connect my lines in order to get a perfect straight line to the end i'll mark my 10.5 inches again and my 12.5 inches and i'll proceed to join the lines now i'll go ahead to use my clips to hold this fabric in place this is a chiffon fabric that moves around anyhow so i'm just going to you know stop it from moving around by putting my clips okay so now let's go ahead to continue our measurement now let us refer back to the calculation we did at the beginning remember i divided my hip by four to get 10.25 and remember i multiplied that 10.25 by 2.5 to give me 25.6 now we'll go over to our crotch line which is the 12.5 inch line we'll go over to that line and measure that 25.6 inches okay after measuring the 25.6 inches i'll go ahead to mark it using my chalk and after marking the 25.6 inches i will go ahead to rule a straight line to meet with the waist line after connecting the line to form a straight line we'll go ahead to create a crotch curve to create a crotch curve we'll need to refer back to this calculation where we calculated our crotch extension remember for our crotch extension we divided our hip by 16 inches my hip is 41 divided by 16 gives 2.56 so i'll go ahead and mark 2.56 at that point then i'll proceed to come out from that angle by one inch after coming now by one inch i'll go ahead to connect the point using my free hand you can use your curve driller so once you are done connecting guys go ahead and move your fabric back to the edge back to the folded edge just the way you see me doing and once you have moved back to the folded edge on the waistline proceed to go in by 1.5 inches from that waistline and mark it so once you go in by 1.5 inches just to give our trouser a bit of shape okay because we don't want it to be straight do you get so i'm going to go ahead to connect from that waist to the crotch line just like you see me doing from the hip to the crotch line i'm going to make it a bit curvy as you can see if you notice from the curve from the hip to the crotch line be the connection is not really straight it's kind of curvy okay so now the next thing i'm going to do is to mark the length of my trouser like i told you guys i want my trouser to be 42 inches in length but i'll go ahead to add two inches seam allowance adding two to 42 gives 44 inches so what i'm going to be marking is 44 inches two inches that i added is my hemming allowance okay so i'll proceed now to just you know mark it and i'll go ahead to connect that into a straight line I'll connect from beginning from the folded edge to the end and once I am done connecting I will also go ahead to shape the other side and I'll do that by going in by one inch from that point and I'll connect from that one inch to the crotch um, line area okay after that I'll move on to the other side and also shape it a bit by going in by one inch and I'll connect from that one inch point to the crotch line as well okay so guys at this point we are done drafting the next step is to cut out please just watch closely how i cut out my trouser because you do not want to make any mistake at this point like there's no point making a mistake at this point so just look closely and follow suit
once i'm done cutting i'll go ahead now to you know remove the part that has the marking that is what i will use to cut out the back part okay so now let's move on to cut the back part now you may be wondering how do i determine the weight of fabric needed for the back part now that's easy easy peasy like they say what you just have to do is to refer back to this calculation where we got 53.76 inches okay what you just do is just add eight inches to that and that is it your back is ready when i added eight inches to mine i got 61.76 but when this fabric is folded what we're going to have is 61.76 divided by 2 which is 30.88 okay so this is what we need to cut out the two back so this fabric now i've already folded it which is why i had to divide what we've gotten so i'll go ahead to measure what i have there and see if it corresponds to this 30.88 it should not be less it can be more than but not less so what i have there is about 33.5 inches which is very okay i told you guys i like to have more in case of any trouble i wouldn't have to cut a fresh you know fabric okay so what i have at that point is about 33.5 inches which is fine if at this point you feel confused about anything do well to leave me comments i respond very quickly to my comments so just leave me comment and there's something i feel like you guys might be confused about you know the first time i measured the you know the fabric we used to cut out the front i measured the fold i didn't measure it on fold guys this one was measured on fold that's why we divided it by two do not be confused about that so now i'm going to go ahead and arrange my fabric just like i did for the front yes the next step is to place the front that has the chalk markings on it on top of this so while placing the front part on the back part there are some key things you need to note one ensure that the allowance you have at the side is about two inches two ensure that the allowance you have at the top is about 1.5 inches this is very very important guys like i said earlier this is a chiffon fabric and it moves a whole lot and i wouldn't want it to keep moving as i take my measurement okay so i'll go ahead to just pin it down then i'll go ahead to take my measurement Once I'm done pinning down, the next step is to elongate this line or extend the line. So after extending the line, I'll go ahead to mark two inches, which is supposed to be the space for my bum bum. Okay. Then at this point, because our back is not straight, I will go in by two inches as well. Okay. Then I will go ahead to try to connect the two of them. Just watch how I'm connecting guys this first curve i did i didn't like it so just pay attention before you connect yours okay so guys after connecting i would go ahead now to uh, mark out my zipper allowance i would want my zip allowance to be one inches wide one inch wide okay so i'll proceed now to mark one inch okay to where i want my zip to stop so guys i'll go ahead to create my zipper allowance uh, like i said my zip will be one inch so after marking the one inch i will try to finish up the other end so that it's easy for me to connect my zipper so from the waistline there i'll mark one inch up can you see after marking that one inch up it's easier for me to create my um zipper and i want the length of this my zipper to be about nine inches so i'm going to go ahead to mark that nine inches and i would extend all the lines and connect all the lines properly so the next step is to move to the other edge so i'm going to pull my fabric and move to the other edge and i will go ahead to mark two inches at that point i'll mark two inches and i'll mark two inches as well and i would go ahead to connect them just like i connected before then i would also go back towards the waistline okay and connect from that one inch at that point to the two inches by the side and make sure the line is straight okay this is just to all these things we are doing all this area it's just to give space for our bum bum okay so um i would just do that so now i'll go ahead to move this fabric towards the length of the trouser that's down and once i get down there i'll go ahead to pin it down as well because i didn't do that before and i'll mark one inch by that side after marking one inch i'll go ahead to connect from that one inch point to meet with that two inches we came out by at that crotch area 
i hope this is explanatory if you have any questions do not forget to leave it in the comments and i would reply as soon as possible now i'll flip back to the crotch area okay and i would go ahead to use my curved ruler to connect from that two inch that we came out by at the crotch line and just connect it like this basically that's all you need to do at this point so i'll go ahead now to cut out everything that we have drafted guys look closely look at how i'm cutting mine so that i do not make any mistakes i feel like it doesn't make any sense to get to this point they make a mistake because you didn't cut well so please and please watch closely and um go ahead to cut yours properly another important part is the zipper allowance area when you get to that point carefully cut it out as well now it's left with the other side i will just go ahead to cut it out carefully and guys we are done drafting the trouser part of this jumpsuit now it's time to work on the bodies the first thing to note while working on the bodies is how to fold your fabric you know you have to put your fabric on fold and um how do you know what you need at that part um you need to divide your bust by four my bust divided by four is 9.5 then plus one inch allowance that's 10.5 so i'm trying to get 10.5 at that point as you can see so um i'll go ahead to keep um, adjusting until what i have at that point is 10.5 and right now that's what i have i'll go ahead to cut off the upper part like i said earlier what i need to have at that point is 10.5 my bust divided by four that is i'm um, 38 divided by 4 is 9.5 plus 1 inch seam allowance that's 10.5 so let's proceed now my shoulder width is 15 inches 15 divided by 2 is 7.5 so i'll go ahead to mark that 7.5 inches after which i'll go ahead to mark the neck weight i want to work with which is three inches i'll mark that three inches then the neck depth i would like to work with is also three inches i'll go ahead to mark that as well and i would go ahead to connect um the three inches i'll connect the first three inch to the second three inch After that, I'll go ahead to come down from the shoulder area by one inch because our shoulder is not straight and I'll connect from that point to the three inch area. Okay, so after doing that, I'll go ahead to mark my armhole line and your armhole line is gotten by dividing your bust by um, six. My bust is 38 inches. 38 divided by six plus 1.5 inches gives me 7.8, approximately eight inches. So I'll go ahead now to mark eight inches from that uh, one inch slope and that is my armhole line. On the armhole line, I'll go ahead to mark the same thing I marked as my shoulder width divided by 2, which is 7.5. I'll mark it at that point and connect them to form a straight line. Okay. After that, I would go ahead to mark other horizontal measurements. And the first thing I'm going to mark is my bust point, which is 10 inches. I'm going to go ahead to mark that. My waistline is 16.5 inches plus 0.5 inch seam allowance. I went ahead to mark 17 inches as my waistline plus the same allowance like i said so i'll go ahead now to rule that out into a straight line like you guys know the reason why i marked it twice is just for me to get a straight line you know so i'll go ahead to connect the point okay then i'll proceed to cut um that out so that i can focus on what i have in front of me okay On my armhole line, I'll go ahead to divide my bust circumference by 4. 38 divided by 4 is 9.5, which I'll go ahead to mark. After which, I'll go ahead to divide what I have at my armhole area. I'll divide it by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so I'll mark it. After marking that, I'll go ahead to go in from that point by 0.5 inches. Go in by 0.5 inches. What we're about to form now is our front armhole curve. Then I'll go ahead to connect the point just watch closely as i connect the point 
First, I'll connect from the shoulder area to that 0 0.5 inch, then from that 0 0.5 inch to that point where I marked my bust divided by 4 on the armhole line, and that basically forms the armhole curve. I'm really sorry that this chalk is not, you know, doing what it's supposed to do. I'm very sure that it's due to the fabric type. The next step is to go ahead and add 1 inch allowance. Like I told you guys, what we are working with is 1 inch seam allowance. Now, the next step is to mark our waist divided by 4 four my waist is 29 29 divided by 4 is 7.25 so i'm going to go ahead now to mark 7.25 after marking 7.25 i'll proceed to add one inch seam allowance and after marking one inch seam allowance i'll go ahead to mark one more inch for that because i'll be adding that to the top part of this um, um outfit so i'll go ahead to connect the points together i'll connect from the waistline to the armhole line guys we are not done just to reduce um time and everything we are going to draft the neckline for the back and the armhole line for the back before we proceed the neck depth for the back neckline it's um one inch that's what i'll be working with so i'll go ahead to mark one inch and connect to that three inch neck width and that forms our back neckline after which i'll move over to the armhole area to form our back armhole curve this is just going to save us time and energy now let's draft out the back armhole what you're going to do from that point where you took your half um inch that like you came in by half inch for the back armhole you are not going in by half inch what you are going to do is to connect from that four inch midpoint to the point where you divided your bust by four so you are connecting from that four inch midpoint to the um, 9.5 inch that you marked at that point guys this is very easy it's just your knowledge of basic body it's how you draft your back arm hole for your basic bodies please just go ahead and do that i am sorry this chalk is just i don't know in fact i just know it's a fabric type so please pardon me pardon me now the next step is to bring out fabric for the back bodies and the back bodies unfold to just be bigger than the front bodies by about two inches because of the zipper allowance okay so i'll go ahead and fold like i did before now then i'll go ahead to place the front pattern on top of it whilst ensuring that i have two inches seam allowance at the zipper area once i have realized or once i have ensured that i have that two inches seam allowance at that point i'll go ahead to mark my two inches um allowance at that point that is not what we're using for our zipper allowance i would explain everything as we move along okay so i'll place the front pattern on top of it like that can you see so i will go ahead now to extend the lines the neckline as well as the waistline okay the zipper allowance i will be working with is 1.5 inches so i'm going to mark 1.5 inch at this point and at the waistline i'll mark one inch just to get rid of zipper bulge and i'll proceed to connect the point i know you might be wondering why did you take a, a zipper allowance of one inch at the trouser area and you're taking 1.5 inch at this point make it make sense this will be explained properly in the next part of this video because i cannot join the cutting and the sewing part together because this video is already so long at this point about 23.89 minutes or 42 minutes at this point so guys because of the um one inch we marked at the waist that implies that we took out half inch from our zipper allowance to you know get as to get rid of zipper bulge so i'll go ahead to mark that half inch again at the side area once i mark the half inch i'll connect that to the armhole line that half inch that we added is just is just for the back bodies once we are trimming out everything for the front bodies guys we're going to trim out the half inch it's not needed at the front i hope this is explanatory if it's not please ask me questions in the comments and i would reply asa now let's go ahead to cut out everything relating to the back please look closely as i cut out i'm currently cutting out the waistline then now i'm cutting out the side seam after which i'll go ahead to cut out the back armhole okay so notice there's a difference between the back and the front armhole so i'll go ahead to cut out the back armhole then i'll cut out the shoulder area 
After cutting out the shoulder area, I'll proceed to cut out the part of the zip that we do not need. Okay, that part that we use to get rid of zipper bulge and I'll go ahead to cut out the neckline area. For emphasis purpose, the back neckline. So now it's time to remove the back and finally finish getting rid of our zipper bulge. And how would we do that? We'll go up from the waistline by half inch and we'll connect that to the side seam. After which we'll go ahead to use our scissors to trim that out. Now let us finish up with the front neckline. We'll cut up the front neckline then we'll also cut up the front armhole area then one more thing we'll cut off that 0.5 inch we added we'll also go ahead to cut it off guys i cut mine off but it wasn't cut on camera please just go ahead and cut yours off and yeah the next step is to go ahead and place your front bodies on fold we are trying to cut out a facing for the front bodies and the back bodies so go ahead to fold a piece of fabric then place this your um, front bodies on top of it then go ahead to trim out the neckline and and decide how wide you want your facing to be then go ahead to also trace how wide you want your facing to be and that's basically our front facing and once we are sewing we're going to place them right sides facing each other and stitch okay just to turn the neckline now let's cut out the back facing the same thing fold a piece of fabric into two and then go ahead to place the back pattern on top of it and because we're cutting two now one for the right side of the back bodies and one for the left side of the back bodies then We'll go ahead to trim out the neckline and the shoulder line then we'll determine how wide we want the facing to be okay and cut that off so now we've cut out the facing for the right and the left side of the back body is the same thing we're going to place them right sides facing each other and we're going to stitch using 0.5 inch same allowance okay see them the next step now is to cut out your pocket fold a piece of fabric again place your hand on top of it the way i'm placing mine mark um your first 0.5 inch line towards your thumb go ahead to ensure that the line is very very visible okay half inch okay then the next step is to measure how wide your pocket will be it's going to be seven inches so mark the other point and you know create the 0.5 inch area the next step is to go ahead to cut your pocket cut out the 0.5 inch then proceed to trace the outline of your hand ensure to add enough allowance around your hand okay then the next step is to cut from the other 0.5 inch and trace it to meet the end then open up your pocket into two and yes we have our pockets now we're going to go ahead to cut out two more because we need more than these two we need four pieces i'll go ahead to fold a piece of fabric again into two then i'll go ahead to place the one i've already cut on top of it then i'll go ahead to use my scissors to trim them out guys i know you're excited to have come to the end of this cutting tutorial in our next video we'll be joining everything we have cut to form this jumpsuit so guys i can't wait to see you in the next video if you haven't subscribed at this point this is the time to hit the subscribe button so i'll be the first to receive any video i post on this space do not forget to also turn on your notification bell icon so that when i post a video you're gonna receive the notification if you enjoyed watching this video give it the thumbs up button like hit the like button leave me comments below if you have any questions i'm ever ready to respond to any of your questions guys and i'll see you in my next video bye